More pushback on David Chipman, and this could be the nail in his coffin. Sit by and watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in Second Amendment news, this is where you'll find it. This channel puts out news every day on the Second Amendment. And unfortunately, there's enough news to put out because the attack on our right to keep and bear arms never stops. So I think it's important that we all stay in the know. So hit subscribe down below, hit the thumbs up on the video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to hit that little bell icon. Hopefully they tell you when I put out new content. Let's get into this uh, new issue here with David Chipman. It's a never ending battle because Biden's trying to push him through at all costs. Well, yesterday, the uh, every Republican in the Senate Judiciary Committee that heard uh, the Chipman uh, nomination and then they were tied on the vote if you remember when it went to the to the Senate floor well they're speaking up regarding his uh, alleged racial remarks while he was uh, one of the supervisors in the Detroit field office I've done videos on this if this is new information to you I am going to link the Chipman videos above please watch those because they're very important because uh, Biden wants this paid uh, anti-gun uh, activist slash zealot to be the head of the ATF and that will never ever ever turn out well. So here is the letter on screen. It came out Thursday and you can see this is from the uh, Committee on the Judiciary from the Senate and it says, Dear Chairman Durbin, we have recently reviewed news reports about President Biden's nominee to be Director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, David Chipman, that required the immediate attention of the Judiciary Committee. According to these reports, Mr. Chipman made racially insensitive comments while serving in the ATF leadership. It was first reported on June 22nd that Mr. Chipman had made racially insensitive comments about the promotion of African American ATF agents. According to the report at the time, an anonymous ATF agent had remembered Mr. Chipman saying, quote, wow, there were an unusually large number of African American agents that passed the exam this time. They must have been cheating, end quote. These were serious charges, not to be taken lightly, but the fact is that it was an anonymous claim in the press without any corroboration. That has changed. In a July 28th article at the independent news site, The Reload, and that is uh, by uh, Stephen Gutowski, it was reported that multiple current and former ATF agents corroborated that they had heard that Mr. Chipman had made racially insensitive comments while serving in the Detroit field office of the agency. The report says, quote, the agents who have decades of experience at the agency told the reload they heard the accusation that Chipman denigrated black ATF agents up for promotion, end quote. One current ATF agent said, quote, Chipman made some comments that he was surprised by the number of African Americans who have made it onto a specific promotional list. So his insinuation was that they had to have cheated, which is kind of despicable, end quote. The agent asked the reporter not to use his name because Mr. Chipman has, quote, got a reputation for being a bully, end quote. And so the agent was worried about retaliation should Mr. Chipman be confirmed. What's more, beyond the alarming nature of these alleged comments, is the fact that these agents claim they affected his tenure at ATF. An unnamed agent told the reload that Chipman, quote, left Detroit because of that controversy. He did not leave Detroit on the best of terms, end quote. The article also notes that another agent, Rick Vasquez, remembered Mr. Chipman not arriving in Detroit on the best of terms either because, quote, nobody else would take the job, end quote. According to Agent Vasquez, quote, he got sent to Detroit against his will. I know that. Detroit has always been a mess." End quote. This report presents two issues that the Judiciary Committee must address. First, we have allegations that Mr. Chipman made racist statements about the abilities of African American ATF agents, the existence of which allegations have been confirmed by current and former ATF officials. Second, these allegations imply that an important field assignment in Mr. Chipman's career was one that he allegedly was both forced first to take and then to relinquish. The first issue gets to Mr. Chipman's character and the second gets to his effectiveness 
as a leader. Both should be of paramount importance to the Judiciary Committee. Mr. Chipman's nomination was never reported from the Judiciary Committee. It failed by an even vote. This means his nomination is still here. Because the Judiciary Committee still has Mr. Chipman's nomination, it's critical that we call him in for a public hearing to address these allegations before any move is made to advance his failed nomination to the floor. Furthermore, you as chairman must lead the Judiciary Committee in calling on the Justice Department and Mr. Chipman to make public and transparent any such records referenced in these reports. In particular, his two equal opportunity complaints Mr. Chipman identified for Senator Cruz and any related documents. And this is signed by the uh, Republican members of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. Chuck Grassley, Lindsey Graham, John Cornyn, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, Ben Sass, Josh Howley, Tom Cotton, John Kennedy, Tom Tillis, and Marsha Blackburn. So this is damning news. We've known about this for a while. I don't know why they're saying they just learned about it from, uh, from the reload, uh, but that news has been out there for a while from other uh, groups as well, other uh, outlets. Uh, so this isn't new news. I've had it in the video as well, and I got it from people who are very credible. So we know that Chipman is a dirtbag, an absolute dirtbag punk, but uh, Biden still wants him because he's an important key uh, to his gun control plans. This falls right in line because Chipman refused to make his personnel records available to this committee, and he also played off the equal opportunity complaints, and the answers he gave were very vague. So absolutely this should be called in. I mean, look, if I was up for director of the ATF, you don't think they would pull every single thing they could on me? Not just because I'm a 2A advocate, but because that is a serious position. Like they should go through every uh, person who is supposed to be a director or, or uh, nominated to be a director, go through them with a fine tooth comb. Don't know why they didn't with Chipman, but tells you all you need to know. This, I believe, is the nail in the coffin for Chipman and in fact, after this letter came through, the Senate Minority Leader, Mitch McConnell, also chirped in. McConnell said, in light of these credible allegations and Mr. Chipman's long record of anti-Second Amendment extremism, the President must withdraw Mr. Chipman's nomination. If the President won't do the right thing, at the very least, Senate Democrats must hold a second hearing and release Chipman's entire record. The American people deserve the full truth about Mr. Chipman's time at ATF, including especially these racist statements. So now the pressure is on uh, Dick Durbin and Joe Biden. First, they want Joe Biden to yank this nomination. And then they also, if that doesn't happen, they want a second hearing, a second bite at the apple to uh, get to the dirt behind this dirtbag punk Chipman. Uh, so let me know what y'all think down below. Uh, this could be this could be the final final nail. I believe it will be because I don't think he has the votes. And this is a way for the president maybe to get a save a little face. But that is politics. Guys and gals, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a fantastic Saturday. And until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry your weapon. Take care, everybody.